new garage time with Dean. That's right. New garage time. New garage time. With all, the, with all the lumber materials. Dean snuck all this out the back door real quick. <laughs> That's why we're not showing the company truck on the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Alright, we're just going to stack all this up uh, here and then we're going to make a new shed for more junk. What time is it? It's Plymouth time. We're going into the Plymouth garage. It's full of Plymouths. And we're going to pick one and we're going to work on it. Right on. Time to get back to work on the 1960 Plymouth Fury hardtop project. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed the straight eight showdown series we did. I had a lot of fun doing that, but it really, it took a lot of hours and uh, they had to come out of this project. So we are back to work on this guy and uh, eagerly awaiting an opportunity to, uh, to uh, fit up the front end here and uh, see if I can get a special guest, uh, Agent 673, to give us a hand here. First thing we have to do is actually start the car. It's been sitting here. Are the keys in it? No, where are the keys? Great to see the Plymouth out in the sun here. We're uh, really, really looking forward to uh, fitting up the hood uh, very soon here. Fine, I'll just do two takes, whatever. Oh, you wanted me in that, didn't you? Uh, let's uh, get at it here while we have such capable help available. Does that bring back memories of your tea days, Tom? I had a Model A that was almost, it was pretty much identical oh. to that. I thought you had a T, that was no, my mistake. No, I mean No problem. Fuck, that's tight getting in there. Working on the 60 Fury hood. It's come a long way. It still has a ways to go, but uh, that was very, very poor. So I'm happy to see it just starting to look like a hood again. A lot of, uh, of course, the worst damage caused by the previous repairs. So having to do a lot of hammering. A lot of hours. This is all oh, was just all smashed in and rudely pulled out. So they had gotten the shape almost completely wrong when they repaired the hood the first time. So I don't know how this car must have looked terrible before uh, when it was repaired. But anyway, here we are hammering away. Um, if I had a better hood, I'd use it, but I don't. And uh, I have a couple other hoods that are worse. So. This is actually the best one I've got. Are we going to fit up this hood, gentlemen? Of course, yeah. We're already doing a couple of things here. Yeah, well. Slave driver. <laughs> that's right, ruthless. Eh? Fitting the hood is a one-arm job, I guess. Oh, yeah, easily. 
this is the Plymouth hood and it's a it's a mess so I want to fit it roughly in the opening but the hinges need to be sanded and painted with gray because as soon as this fits we're painting it Nice. Yeah, it's ready to go. Oh, Fucking good enough. Yeah, those guys went way beyond the call of duty on that. And that looks boring. Just don't hurt yourself. You went the wrong way. Just go gently opening the door, right? I'm learning to use my fingers again, boys. You know, you've been in a cast in the last seven videos <laughs> <laughs> for various reasons. Uh, okay, watch the lights above your head there. You guys are crazy. Okay, here it you comes. Just, you just worry about that back corner, oh, I got and I got, I got the rest of the hood. You had me the far hood part. Okay, Scott's the got that. Yeah, we're laughing. Justin has the whole front of the hood, and he just got a corner. I'm trying not to bark shit up too much, but we're also not fucking. Scar had had a rough time of it. Been so, punted around a few times. And yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have to depart. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some fitting to do there. Okay. All in all, not as horrible as it could be. No, really happy with that side, and uh, not horrified by this side. But there's, you can see, this has all been damaged before, and it's just. All right, well, we've got the hinges installed roughly, and now we're gonna try to loosely fit the hood here. So Tom's gonna lift the hood on, and Gary and I are gonna put the screws in. You got one started, Tom? Nope. Okay, one at a time, always. Not one started. Okay. You got one started there? No, nope, we gotta do each side one at a time. Okay. So you might as well do both of yours, and then I'll do both of mine. Because we have to push against each other a bit. Should go on? This is that fucking, you give yeah, me the side that has shitty. the yeah, shit fucking welds in here. There you go. Are yeah. going in though? Okay, that's yeah. in. Your way? Okay, push it. No, pull it towards you. Okay. I like what you did with the hinges. That they look fucking original, hey? Eh? Yeah, well, they're supposed to be bare metal. What if you leave them bare metal? Well, yeah, they rust. Yeah, up no, at the no, front. but this this does look up at the front. Far enough? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, just give her a slam. Give her a slam. Yeah, Don't her trust her yourself. Come on. Oh, oh they're overlapping by like a quarter of an inch here. Mm -hmm. I put it in He's the wrong hole, sweet. It's actually not that bad. You're not hitting anywhere back here. What either. is going on, though? Like, this has got to drop by a long way. You okay. push your corner down. That's as far as it goes. Isn't it? Okay, so we have real. We got issue. some work. Issue. Well, that's very typical of crash yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Popped. I thought. Well, you know what you can do? You can put a shim in the front. Well, I can see a little bit of the slot yeah, sticking yeah, out the bottom. Yeah, yeah, no, they're both maxed. Yeah. Well, put a shim here. Well, that very often that tips it that way. Yeah. If you put a shim here, like on this here, not on this side where this washer yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> like we had one guy at school, he's fucking putting all these washers on. Oh, he had a fucking bolt this long. Oh yeah, fuck <laughs> shim in the wrong side of the bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> what a just, fucking idiot. He just a shim collection when he yeah. was done. Yeah. Fucking bolt is uh, fucking wrong. Can, there's a few things we have to do. We have to oil the hinges first off. I'll get the oil. And then we have to... Um, then we got to put that side bolt in. All right, well, we'll try it again. There. Okay, see if it'll close. Oh, we got to come a long way to get it. Okay, we got to come over that way and still ahead. 
and the head here. Well, not bad here. No, it's looking pretty good here yet, too. But like you say, by the time you get that drill piece in, it'll be tight here. Yeah, okay. It and could come ahead still a little. Be coming ahead at eight. Well, we may have to adjust the fenders a little bit, too, right? Eh? Yeah, well, you know, this is all homemade. Yeah. Right? So yeah. We have to tweak it. Well, we've still got to come ahead. It's not really the end of the world. Yeah, we got to come that way, too. Look at it, it's hitting the fender in there. This side is not. This side is. Both, both got to come it's ahead. It's all such junk. Yeah, it is. It's just such junk. Both got to come ahead. Okay. This fender a little bit yeah, here. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all really bad. Like, you see, they flattened that all out when they pounded it and it made it bigger. Yeah. So, this all has to get fucking beat back. But we're getting a nice line here, though. Well, that's important. You see? Isn't yeah. it? And we even got good height well, here. Well, that's better, eh? Right? Well, the fender can come up. Yeah. Well, then. What more do you want? Fuck. Good enough. This well, how much can the fender come up to? Oh, lots. 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 Well, it's already higher than the door. Oh, that's right. no problem. Just put a 2 by 4 there and hit it down. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, there we go. What's, what's the matter here? You don't know this? <laughs> yeah, right. Your first day in here, or what's the point? Is this one of those fucking cake cars? Every time you close the hood, it was different. Yeah, it was different, yeah. Fuck, you couldn't fix those fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking wind would puff them out. Like, if you yeah, closed yeah. it too quick. <laughs> Whoever fixed this car did a terrible job back in the day. But that's all it was, Oh, you right? blame Alex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alex wasn't even born. <laughs> well, this Hell, I wasn't even born when this car got fixed. This repair was done in the 60s. Oh, fuck. Well, I didn't do it. Yeah, well, you're the likely suspect here, I have to say. You're the most likely suspect, buddy. You're the only one who was alive, so it had to be you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Frankers, it wasn't you. Oh, yeah, fuck. You weren't alive either. Okay, well, you got her under control. Oh, yeah, I'll just fine tune yeah. it from here. Thanks, Yeah. yeah. Okay, I gotta fuck off. All right, I'll boss. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, man. What's, thanks. What's today? Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. yeah, good. Let's try that. So, not, much. Uh, not enough. Yeah, it's okay. It's It'll go. Huh? Pretty good here. Yeah, and it's pretty reasonable over here. None of it's uh, out of control. Ooh, you got this looking pretty good. A lot better, yeah. I've been beating on that for quite a while. Frankers, what's going on? Oh, hey. So are you coming to get this baby? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's nice. Do we, should we have a look at the motor? Yeah. Yeah, that's as it came out of the mold. Wow. wow. For 50 and years ago. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the windshield Intact. is fine. No, this is a pretty rare machine. And, and I think it's stuff. kind of a a rebodied boa ski, so yeah, there's yeah. some quite a bit of interchangeability of parts. Yeah. Right on. So 1970. 1970, I think. Yeah. yeah according to the, the wild number. one. The wild one. Do you see the seed? Indeed. Okay. How the seed is embossed. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like, wow. 
It's in such good shape. This must have been inside the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I think it's been inside. Yeah, it was in a little uh, a little collapsing outbuilding on the phone. All three of them were. Yeah. It's made by yeah. Herf. Made in, made in Germany. Yeah, this is a... Designed for, I think, just kind of like running water pumps and things like that. How many horsepower do you think? Um, I don't know, it's 292 cc's I think, so not more than 20, like 15, 15 maybe 16. To 20, uh, 15 to low 20s. You can look at it and you can see how it's <laughs> actually goes. put together. Yep. But it's not, look at under here, like usually these are just beat to death and they're both, yeah. like that's really clean. Yeah. It's a little bit, some stump damage there, but yeah. nothing too bad, and it's not even that rusty. No. Well, I've seen some funny stuff, but this has got to be one of my favorites. Of course, we're both from Saskatchewan. Man, it's, it's like the Citroen ME of snowmobiles. Put the lid on so we can see how it looks as a complete machine. Because the hood doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. And frankly, it doesn't look like anything designed by somebody who did industrial design for a living. <laughs> because it looks really weird. I like the bumper bar. Yeah, no, it's yeah. an acquired, it's acquired taste. It's an acquired taste. God. Yeah, I'm just... It takes quite a while to acquire. It takes a lifetime of saving to acquire the taste yeah. for this. It looks like it belongs on a Ferris wheel. Yeah, it looks like a crazy yeah. bumper car or something. Yeah, bumper car. Yeah. Wow. It makes the ski -Doo model look like a masterpiece of 70s modernism. Which it kind of is in comparison. This is... This is Canada's equivalent of the Chevy Impala, really. These things were just everywhere back in the day. Uh, this one's pretty good. Usually they're just run into the ground and abandoned. This one's been kept inside. What year do we think this was? 70. Probably mid 70s. Oh, here we are. Oh, I'm full of shit. 1971, you guys. There we go. Yeah. That is cool. All mechanical. Porsche 924 owners eat your heart out. Sweet. What have we got here? Oh my god. Upcoming classic tire episodes, apparently. <laughs> this is a contender. All the other tires, they could have been a contender. This is, uh, other than being horrifyingly dry rotted, uh, still pretty round. <laughs> Jesus, eh? Have we put this on a car? Silly question. Wow! Just like a crumbly old eraser. Well, that's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect for around here. Fraggers, classic tires, that's right. What did we get? What did we not get? What did we not get? Well, did we get, we didn't get anything roadworthy. <laughs> what is this? An L78 Firestone. Town and country, one of my favorites. Town and country. Yeah, one of the staples. Yeah, a staple, a local staple. Yeah. The typical zigzag worn out farm truck type of tire. Firestone Transport 110. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's got about a 3% uh, a tread rating on that. Oh, uh, Winter Patrol. Pretty classic. This is a Uniroyal L7815. That would be probably a uh, half ton truck and doesn't look like it's patrolling very much what's this guy custom custom turbo track oh yeah <laughs> the custom turbo track oh it's an astro there you go yeah, no when i saw that i started like i started gushing about the the, the custom turbo track 78 by the way um yeah the two guys that were there they started looking at me funny. No kidding. Uh, what do you got there? That one's brand new. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. Finally. Oops. Yeah. Don't get my truck yeah. dirty. Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, the story was was the uh, 
the, the father or the grandfather had a uh, had a service station so there was kind of this is everything that's left from uh, kind of be the service station right so some are kind of okay others are just probably There's take a big 14 yeah good takeoffs yeah this is brand new but yeah. uh, it's obviously so oh yeah no dry rotted the, the but you know what it never sat flat right it doesn't have any stress from from sitting with a car on it well it was sitting with a shed on it so I mean that's a kind yeah of, it's kind of like that then yeah but well I don't know we'll put it on something and a snow mark. Oops. A lot of water getting on the camera here. Jesus. And what is all this? This is other stuff from the same hall? Yep, yep. Firestone same. Deluxe from Champion. The same, from the same collapsed shed. Well, whenever you see a collapsed shed, yep. you got to get in there. Yep. No, I saw. <laughs> At great personal risk to your safety. Oh, yes. And scrounge out the I classic right tires. What is this? Oh, is this? Oh, oh winter the, cleat. The winter cleat, I know, right? Yeah, winter cleat is kind of a classic. Oops. Yeah. Super low profile, you guys. Yeah. It's a winter tire special today. Right. Yeah. No, this is your uh, this is your yearly reminder to a. Uh, yeah, this is put your, your put your on. grips on reminder, public service reminder. Yeah. Cold War Motors PSA. Yeah. <laughs> right. Show us your grips. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Winter patrols are really cool. And one more. The, the, the snow, oh, the finale the is snow plow. the snow plow belted. Yeah. Also from Uniroyal. Yeah, that's a, 78. That's a nice sweetheart. That is really cool. Never, yeah. I don't know if I've seen one, so that's really cool. A snow plow. We've got one of everything. Excellent. Oh, well, that's quite a snow others. tire haul. So the spring has broken, but it seems like it's actually, yeah, see the one that I'm driving, these are worn right through from the bushings uh, being so badly worn out. So there might be actually a lot of good pieces on this T-chassis that we can use. The, uh, this rail is straight and you can see that that one has a little bit of a bend in it. So I don't, uh, really need it for uh, a car project just more for parts but yeah really fun happy to see uh, that it's uh, as described and the front axle looks really good as well so there's just no way that I was gonna turn that all down for 50 bucks come here oh headlights I wonder what these headlights are for. Just window glass in the front, so don't really know. The, hey, that might be. We'll have to look it up, but there's a six fold horn that looks suspiciously similar to the horn I might need to fix the one in the T. And here's a, oh, this is a valve grinding jig. And this, yeah, that's a, that's a T steering column. Yeah, for sure it is. That's another T column. Uh, well, I don't need any parts, but you never know. And another one of these tire inflator things that goes in your engine. And an old hand pump. I think the saw blade is terrific. Look at that. A lot of nice, uh, pieces here. I wonder what this, this is slightly different column. I don't know what's going on. It says, it says Decker Jr. on the column there. I'm going to have to do a little research. That might be interesting. So, uh, I think we made a video of tearing the old building down with the Fraser. Uh, and this is the new building that's going up. So we're going to do it in the style of a, an old style gas station with a, with a low uh, peak on the front that sticks out. So we'll bring the roof way out front there. And it'll have a little overhead door for me to park the T. And uh, anyway, we're just framing it up here. 
thought you guys might like a look at it and uh, we'll uh, be uh, finishing this up over the course of, well, it was supposed to take a week or a day. Of course, it's not happening. All right, let's put a few more pieces on. Fingers once done of it. Who's that? Who's that? Okay, we gotta fit the front of the car together, the Frankers. So, the basic problem is it uh, is everything. The car does not really just fall together when it's been hit and fixed multiple times. Uh, this was in a, in a pretty bad collision back in the day. And this should have probably not been fixed then, but it was. So anyway, this is the only hood I have. Well, I have another one that's even worse. We've uh, we've spent a couple of hours on it just to get it this far but we're nowhere near a fitted car here so what do we say today's light light buzz job hey hey Frager Franks uh, I think we decided the first thing we want to do is get the fenders kind of up and closer to where they are going to be uh, just because they're all jammed at the bottom of their adjustment right now. Hey, that's enough. Here we go. There's get this alignment a little better in here. Ditto. National Sloney Showdown. Okay. This guy. Good place to start. This side already pretty close. The side that I spent some time on is really pretty close. Pretty decent. Not terrible. This side, still, still a bit back. Assuming that this is right. We'll shoved in all the way, so it's going to make our lives a little easier. side too, hey? Where's the... This is just still all over the place, right? This one still a little all over the place. This is the hardest part. Right? Okay? Anything like this. Taking all these shitty parts. Making it look like they all all the same car. Yeah. Same Making thing. everything actually fit. It's everything, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. Like, nothing else matters. Doesn't matter how fast it is, how shiny it is. Doesn't fit. It's a piece of shit. Two on this side. Maybe one on this side. Two on this, three on this side. Two, one and a half. should be a gap there right now on so. so that means that this gap is actually a lot bigger than it looks like here. 
Well, with a couple of hours work fitting the fenders and hood, we're starting to look like something here. There's no latches in anything yet, but uh, you can see I'm going to have to pull this hood a little bit there, and then she fits. Just a, I've cut that cut that brace out of there so that I can change the angle of the front of the hood because it was all crashed. So that's looking good. Finally got the uh, back corner of the hood laying down nice against the cowl. Nice gap all the way to the front here. Decent, tight but decent gap except for right here where this has all been pounded flat. They've pounded it so flat that it's uh, the gap gets tight here so that's going to have to be beat back into place. So that's a bit uh, disappointing but not too bad. Overall the hood has come a long way from being just absolutely garbage. So starting to get the shape back in here now. I'm gonna have to uh, lay up the grill. I gotta cut the brace out of this side because this hood is still pushed back a bit from the accident. You can see it turns sharply south here so that's gonna have to get repaired yet. Starting to look nice there. These are surprisingly small uh, panel gaps for a car of this age. I can finish tweaking out the fender to door fit. Somebody had folded this door in at one time to, for whatever reason, I don't know. So the door is slightly behind the fender now. So I can unfold the door back to where it belongs. The door is a little low compared to the fender here but I believe that's also for uh, clearance because the door has to open underneath the windshield molding that goes here. So I'm not going to panic about that. We'll try and get it as close as we can, but if there is a slight height differential there that helps the door uh, clear the windshield molding, then that's fine too. And uh, everything else fitting nicely. Door gap is really nice. Doors close nice. Panel fit all coming together now. The hood was the last real battle on the on the panel fit before we start the bodywork so next time we see this car it uh, it's going to be uh, getting ready for bodywork and and then so the basic plan is uh, fit the panels, rough out the bodywork, put a coat of primer on it blow the car apart, paint the insides of everything, put the car back together, gap everything for the final time, put every bolt and screw in it, then prep it out and paint the outside. So that is uh, that is my what did you do this winter uh, project. It's taking longer than we originally hoped but it's also uh, I think a lot nicer job than I originally intended to do so for better or worse that's what's happening. Except I have no idea what's going on what? Come on, roll and take us through it, Dean. Uh, well, Steven here is yeah. kind of uh, figuring out the front end of this Citroen DS, 1966. Uh, I think it's 67 or 8. It's really cool, but yeah. I'm very cautious of this car because it's almost like a princess. So, Steven's guiding us on a mission here. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's gonna take us through. Game battles, Are you so done? Are you yeah, done yet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, guiding blindly, you mean? Yeah. yeah we're just gonna feel so our way. I have no idea how this really goes together. I've never worked on one of these, and I did not. Take I'm it. having a laugh. I took it all apart and didn't tell anybody. Oh, you did? Oh, it's yeah. a, oh, it's a challenge. I guess I should get in there. Um, get in there. Okay. Get your uh, number six millimeter <laughs> fine metric thread. Frankers. Are you really helping? The basic idea here is that we're going to start fitting up the DS project before we can really finish the bodywork. The panels all have to be fitted. What? Fraggers, seriously. I blame Dean for it's that. Silly. It's silly. Dean. <laughs> teasing Fraggers again. Was he teasing you or were you egging him on? I think I was teasing maybe a little bit too much too. Calm down, Frankers. She's so Calm cute. down. We've just uh, quickly installed everything so that it's not uh, hanging around. So it's not on the floor. Every, nothing is fine tuned, but 
I want to get it at least so that they'll be close before we even, there's no point in doing any body work or finishing anything until, until it's all fitted. So, uh, Dean and I are going to pull this fender off and put the little rubber bumper thingies in it that hold it together. All right. And Steven gets to play, put the bumper together. Are we smoking ditch weed with our best friends here? Or I, thought you were, I thought you had the incense burner, like church time over here. Yeah, right, like church burner. Remember those back in church when I was a kid? Those priests had to be. It was crazy I had to go to church with my parents, right? And they would burn that shit. It's not so bad, man. Really? Dean, you have to be drunk for us in Wells. Oh, yeah. I can't believe me. Yeah. With a bottle of. I said, you guys should be. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Hey, just a regular yeah. Saturday night. What we'll is do? it? It's not Saturday. It's Monday. Oh, is it yeah, really? What am I doing? Yeah. No, yes, it's Monday. Ugh. Smarten up. <laughs> Smarten up. What would you do well, that would be smarter than this? Yeah, I just Anything do this. really, I guess. I would just do this. Cars, man. Right? right? Cars. So, so we're already we, uh, on the case here, and I'm yeah. just supervising usually. <laughs> so, what you call this? <laughs> also, I become president. Supervising. Supervised by Dean. I'm gonna buy the rights to the company. You get a direct? I'm just gonna start. Why don't you direct? Okay, I'll direct for a bit. When the battery dies, then. Is it, how much charge. battery do we have? I don't know, you probably got five minutes at least. Alright, okay. Well, so far, no, Steve, bad. this is important. The car's gonna come together. So I need to know where. Right, so that can stay, stay loose. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the damage here. Mm -hmm. That's gonna bring it to crash. Oh. It's all pushed down here too and all bent. Mm -hmm. Everything is pretty bent. Right? That looks fine. From here. See that? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kidding, man. Don't worry, guys. It's fine. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little, I don't know. Yeah, like none of this is very good, right? Look at the damage there. Yeah. Yeah. So. The nice thing is, is the damage is matching up, so we're, I at least know those yeah, two panels go together. There, yeah. Cool. And it'll all come back, yeah. but it means that this is going to be low. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is what's going on, Dino? Okay, here we go. Here we Guys, go. getting in there. Installing the fender. Just for now, for mock up. Just right? for mock up. I'm like the worst, eh? Just like the worst guy to have around. <laughs> by Dean. Worst guy around, eh? So here's where we got to on the DS on the very first fit up of the of the panels. Uh, everything is just loosely on. There's no latches, so we can't really close the doors to finalize anything yet. But uh, day one was really just a matter of finding the panels, finding the fasteners, and hanging everything uh, just so that it was able to be fitted. It's not fitted, but it's able to be fitted at this point. We actually did do a look at this car uh, when it was still sitting in the field at Richards. I don't think we've seen the car really very much since. Uh, in the meantime, uh, my friend Richard has mechanically gone through the car and uh, it is all uh, rebuilt mechanically. Let's have a look. It's kind of hard to see but Everything is is new on the car. We'll obviously do a very detailed look at this as we get through it, but uh, it's a very nicely spec car. This is a Palas model DS, which is the top of the line trim, and it's going to have leather, and it has all the nicest uh, fittings. We're going to be fitting air conditioning to the car and we're going to be going through uh, the, the painting and reassembly process and everything it has to leave here is a finished, uh, finished car, essentially a brand new car. So a lot of fun and uh, really looking forward to uh, putting this together for a very, very good friend of mine. The uh, mission for the car is a very presentable uh, driver car. 
so it's not being put together as a concourse car even though it will be very nice uh, we're not worried about detailing the undercarriage and the correct shade of overspray on the bolts and any of that it's more or less a very nice car that is literally going to get driven on gravel roads so we're not gonna you know it's not meant to be a concourse car that would just be a waste of money up to this point I've put bottoms in the doors because they're always gone and uh, that's really it. The car has been bumped around a bit, so we've got some light collision damage to sort out. Uh, and the biggest rust was the door bottoms, which have been sorted. I put a couple little pieces in one fender, but they are really the best I've ever seen. The car for rust is, uh, is the best DS I've ever seen. I really hope you guys uh, look forward to this as much as I do, because these cars are unlike anything else in the world, and they're they're, uh, they're getting very hard to find good ones, so we want this one to be good. We'll be going through the process on this car. It needs all the same stuff as the Fury, so we're going to do them both at the same time. Now, back on the Fury, I uh, did a little body work on the valence here and put a first coat of primer on, which has been blocked off. Now we're going to put the final coat of primer, and this thing gets ready for paint. I'm going to match the color to the lower valence on my 59, which is original. Um, they're, I believe, just a silver. Because the silver paint on these was uh, just a quick, uh, quick dry lacquer for production line reasons, that's what it's going to get. So let's just uh, put the last coat of primer on it here and uh, next week we'll paint it. And, uh, and then we'll see how she looks. Um, this was a, a fun project to salvage. This valence was comically uh, trashed, so... It will be really rewarding to see this uh, come back together from something that was really probably wouldn't have been hard to find. A, well, I was going to say wouldn't have been hard to find a better one, but if it had been easy to find a better one, I would never have fixed this one. So this one is infinitely better than what was on the blue car when I got it because all that was on that car was the two ends and the middle was mostly gone. We are hard at the Lotus 51C uh, Formula Ford car. And once we finished uh, painting that, I will be putting together a video of that entire process. And uh, then we're going to take it for a drive. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that, to say the very least. All right, let's go. Well, I don't see anything that needs to be any better than that, so I'm going to clean the gun and we'll paint it right away. This is a, another piece of the front end that has to go on and be made to fit. And it uh, doesn't seem too tricky, but it does establish a couple of critical dimensions here, so I'm just going to mock it up. 
just to see that everything's going to work. Obviously we won't be using these bolts and nuts, but they will get it on the car for now. And uh, help. Sometimes it's nice to use just generic shitty hardware store fasteners for your mock-up because I don't have time right now to clean all the original ones properly like we will when we put it together for the final time. But for now, just to make sure everything's going to fit, we can just do it like this. That guy still has to be tied to that guy by welding. And <clears throat> just gonna double check the lower pan it's sitting right here. <clears throat> that doesn't actually does not share any fasteners with this. So it's a little gappy there, but the bumper actually comes up here. So it's more important how it fits with the bumper. Yes, there's no provision for tightening that up, so it's obviously meant to just kind of sit there. This was pretty badly damaged on this side, so I've already done a fair amount of hammering on it, but I haven't done any prepping or body work on it. Just kind of got it into shape so that we can start that stuff. But learned the hard way about doing body work and then fitting the panels up. That just it works zero percent of the time.
Okay, well, that's uh, really all that we really need to fit up right now to prove to me that it can all be um, bodywork at this point. A lot of this little stuff can get painted separately hanging up, but uh, generally with metallic colors you want to paint the outside of the car all at one time. Uh, you might get lucky and paint the outside of the metallic car pieces at a time, but generally not. Um, it's hard enough to make it look good when you paint it all at one time, much less when you paint it in pieces it becomes very difficult. Um, so, uh, this car, all of this goes white anyway, uh, in here. These things are silver, on the Fury anyway. Uh, the lower valence would be silver, this is white, silver, uh, blue there. It looks like the white line goes in here. Oh wait, no, I think the bottom of this is white. And I believe even in here is white, just that little bit, but somebody could correct me. Um, I think I want to get it as close as I can to the correct factory paint job, so um, since it really doesn't take that much more time to put it back the way it should be. So uh, next time we'll put some latches and everything. Still have to button a few things up, but the large, uh, the large majority of it is going to be fine. And some of this stuff's a little rough, um, you know, a little bit of hammering to flatten some of these crummy looking edges out. This is all pretty decent. Some little damage in here is a molding that goes on here. By getting it to fit, we can now go ahead and bodywork this stuff. Uh, I've got more work to do here. The hood doesn't fit with the fender yet, so that I'm going to cut the brace out of that hood. And we can fold this, unfold it rather, probably pushed in from the accident. So tweak that. I may have to tweak my piece that I made here, because of course the hood was nowhere near it when I made that. Um, so, you know, if we can't get it all out by pulling on it, I don't mind tweaking that a little bit. Um, these holes all line up, this all lines up. The pan fits nicely in here, and it fits nicely with its mate here. And the bumper, I believe the bumper comes up just above this, or yeah, I think so. I think the bumper sits here. So you really only see this inch in the middle of this. You don't see any of that. You don't see any of that. And uh, that could have been a lot worse. Uh, but realistically, uh, we do have several days into this uh, just getting it, you know, so that it doesn't look absolutely terrible. Uh, there's a lot of poorly fitted cars out there and it kind of spoils the car, even if the rest of the car is good. So. I don't, uh, I don't mind this part of the process, even though it is the most tedious. This is the part where you wonder if you're ever going to finish the car. And, uh, but if you rush this part, you don't like the car. So I, uh, I'm going to just keep picking at it because it doesn't really cost anything but time to get the car to fit and look like a really nice car. Whereas spending a lot of money on uh, engine and, and, you know, a bunch of fancy shit. If the car doesn't fit, it still looks like garbage, so. Uh, fit, that's the thing. It, uh, it separates the good cars from the bad cars, honestly. Um, fit is everything, and, uh, you know, <laughs> you can certainly pick easier cars to make fit well. Uh, these cars, even if you started with a nice original one, it's this much, well, it's not this much trouble, but even getting a good one to fit can be trouble, and getting something like this absolute disaster to fit is, uh, is a real challenge, but I also, uh, you know, we're not doing this because it's easy, right? We do it because it's hard. We do it because it's hard, and therefore it's rewarding. And therefore, that's uh, that's it for today, and therefore, that's our thumbnail. Let's have a looky. Wow, it looks more like a car than it's looked in quite a while, actually. Uh, 
guy can't be too disappointed in that. Okay, well, we'll see everybody next week. Cheers. This is a regular ah, contributor. Same old shit. The headlights are, in fact, for Model T. They're just for an earlier model. That's why they don't have the nice ripple glass in them. Uh, but I was able to salvage a reflector of the other one to uh, make up for the one I don't have. None of it's great, but it is uh, certainly better than nothing, and I can decide when I put the car on the road if I want to put new reproduction reflectors in just for safety reasons. Uh, but meanwhile, this will fill the hole, and uh, that uh, takes care of one of the few pieces that I was missing, so that's really cool, and I want to uh, Say thanks again to Larry for uh, for letting us uh, come out to his place there and uh, rescue a bunch of that stuff. It's very, very cool of him. And thanks to patron Matthew for setting that up. That was awesome, buddy. Cheers. I don't have it in front of me right now, but that uh, steering column that we found in the back of the truck that I said was for a Model T is in fact for a Model T, and it's just a stock T steering column with what is called a Decker Junior steering column lock on it. Got a little carried away with the building design and didn't really, you know, didn't really make any drawings per se, so everything has to be kind of what they call field fit, I think, in engineering land.